Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I'm so glad that you were able to spend a little time with me and find some time in your day to um, talk about quilting and play around with quilting and kind of discover some new skills, hopefully, today. So we have um, a lot uh, planned for you today. And I hope that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know that our Thanksgiving was a little different this year, right? Everybody's Thanksgiving was a little different this year. Um, uh, this was the first time that I wasn't able to um, have all of my children together with me on Thanksgiving and um, just kind of bittersweet, but thankfully with um, technology we were able to connect um, during the day. So hopefully you experienced that as well. Hopefully you had some time uh, with your family, whether virtually or in person, and got to enjoy a little bit of the holidays. Um, so um, I think people are kind of filtering in. It's always fun to see where you're from and see how far flung our audience is. So if you just over in the comments put what city and state you're in, um, I would love to know. We have people who watch in Australia and Ireland and Montana and Alaska and all over the place. So of course we are a uh, quilt shop here in Louisville, Kentucky and we specialize just in machine quilting and helping you feel comfortable and confident with machine quilting, whether it be on your sit-down domestic or if you have a stand-up uh, long-arm, mid-arm, short-arm machine. So um, we really try to find ways to kind of get you, uh, get your sea legs under you, get you walking on your baby feet and, and feeling like you, you know which way you're headed. So um, that's our goal really is to help you uh, feel more comfortable and confident. So um, I do encourage you to sign up for our newsletter. On our newsletter, you're gonna find um, a lot of information. We just uh, finished our um, holiday free motion quilting um, extravaganza where every day in your inbox was a downloadable worksheet with a step-by-step -step instruction of how to do some fun uh, free motion holiday designs. So hopefully you're on our newsletter list because you definitely want to take advantage of that. And then we do have like some secret sales and things like that that get announced in the, um, <clears throat> pardon me, in the newsletter list. And one of those is going on right now where we have our 12 days of Christmas and each day we highlight a different product that you might be interested in and you'll get notified about that secret sale if you're in our newsletter. So um, we also notify you about upcoming um, clubhouses and any tutorials or downloadables that we create for you that you can take advantage of. So do sign up and I wanted to let you know as well that we have um, two virtual classes coming up this weekend. On Friday is the APQS beginners class. And that is a class that comes, if you were to purchase an APQS machine, or if you have purchased an APQS machine, um, it comes with your purchase for that first year of ownership. You get to take it one time. And so we have moved that all onto Zoom and we have it with multiple cameras, kind of like what we're doing here today. So you can get a nice close up of what you're doing and what we're talking about. And it's all lecture demo and we go through needles, thread, batting, tension, a little bit of like how to load, some business stuff. There's so much stuff in that class and it goes from 10 a.m. Eastern until 4 p.m. Eastern time. And if you would like to sign up, perhaps you don't have an APQS machine or perhaps you've had your APQS machine for more than a year. Um, we lo certainly have loads of folks take that class with um, that own a different brand machine and you're certainly welcome to take that class. Um, that class is $200. Again, if you've uh, bought your APQS machine within the last year and you haven't already taken that class, you could sign up um, and take that one for free. Just give us a ring and um, we'll be happy to get you all uh, squared away and answer any questions that you have, um, you can call us at 502-718-7148 or you can send in an email on the website. So then the next class that we have is on Saturday and that one is our introduction to custom quilting. And that one we go through blocks, borders, corners, sashing. And that one is not, uh, we don't really talk about a specific brand of machine at all. It's really more about how to read a quilt and give you the foundational skills you need to build your custom quilting motifs, your go-to motifs. Um, and you will walk out of that class with, oh, dozens and dozens of designs that you can do the very next day on your first custom quilt. So um, we really spend a, a great deal of time uh, focusing on those fundamental designs that I think will serve you well over time. That one runs from uh, 10 a.m. until about 2.30 p.m. all Eastern time, because we're in Kentucky, all Eastern time. 
and that one is $125. And you can sign up for that one on our website at quiltedjoy.com. Again, it's all a Zoom class. These are all recorded so that you can watch the class for a couple of weeks after you take the class. So you can refer back and there's loads of downloadables and, and items that you can have forever um, to refer back to of all the stuff that we have talked about. So if you're interested in any of that, you can find more information on our website at quiltedjoy.com or you can give us a call or you can send us an email. Um, any of those ways to find us will work and we'll get your questions answered and get you signed up for the class if you so choose. Okay, so um, have we got people filing in there, Jesse? We sure do. Yeah? Uh, let's see here. We've got Michelle from Finger Lakes Michelle. Region of New York State. The Finger Lakes Region of New York. Okay, Michelle, now you're giving me a, a, a lesson in geography. I'm going to go have to find out where you are. Who else we got? We got Vicki in Cincinnati. Hi, Vicki in Cincinnati. Let's see. We've got Andrea from McAllister. Oklahoma. Andrea from McAllister, Oklahoma. Again, these geography lessons. Andrea, I used to live in uh, Norman, Oklahoma when my dad, I was a tiny bitty thing, but my dad went to pharmacy school there in Norman. So I, I, I have lived there for a very brief portion of time. All I remember is tornadoes, lots and lots of tornadoes. That's all I remember. <laughs> well, welcome everybody. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, all right, we are gonna talk today about feathered wreaths about the inside, how to do the inside of the feathered wreath. So 2020 has been our year of feathers. And of course, all of our clubhouse meetings are all recorded. So you can go back on our YouTube channel, our Quilted Joy YouTube channel, and you can watch all of these, um, all of these clubhouse meetings if you need a refresher course. We've talked about different types of spines. We've talked about different types of feathers. We've talked about how to fit feathers into different types of shapes. And so our pinnacle lesson here at the end of the year is this difficult, and it is difficult, a feathered wreath. So this is not a beginner thing. So if you are on the struggle bus with this, just give yourself some grace and forgiveness because it will take you a little while. So the last lesson that we did was those outside feathers. And I hope that you've had a chance to play and practice those outside feathers. Um, I was blown away. I hope you guys saw Pam's um, photo that she posted in the Quilted Joy Clubhouse on Facebook, our Facebook group, because she, um, she did those outside feathers right after our meeting last time in, in November. And it just blew me away. Um, um, you know, sometimes it's like if you hear something in a different way, it clicks for you and, and you can connect the dots a little bit better. And Pam did an amazing job. So she posted a photo of her outside feather. So um, do go back and look at that for your outside. It also gives you all of the dimensions to use for the registration lines. And we have those um, on our blog. Um, I'm gonna put, um, Kelsey, do we have the link for that? So, so you can go to this um, site. It's a, just a page on our Quilted Joy blog. And it has all the dimensions of the templates you need to use to mark the registration lines for your spine, for your outside circle, um, boundary and then for your interior circle boundary for these interior feathers we're about to talk about today and it shows all of those um, sizes based on whatever size wreath whatever size block you're trying to fill so of course a, a wreath that's going to fit into a 12 inch block is going to use different size templates than a wreath that may fit into like a, a six inch block for example so all of that's on the blog so do go to that link and you'll find um, all those little cheat sheet guides of what size templates to use and then as far as how to how to actually use those templates go back and watch that november um, edition of our clubhouse meeting because I go through how to mark because um, you're going to use certain size templates to mark with and you're going to use certain size templates to actually stitch that spine with. So do go back and review that. But today we're just going to talk about these inside feathers and inside feathers can throw people. Um, there's two kind of two kind of personality types when it comes to interior feathers on a feathered wreath. Um, one is a, hey, let's just jump off the cliff and see what happens on the way down. And the other is a, no, 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 I want marks, I want registrations, I want targets, I want information. Um, you need to give me some hard data, lady, not just, you know, let's just try it and see what happens. So uh, depending on which camp you fall into, um, I'm gonna give you two different approaches. So 
I would encourage you to try both um, because you may surprise yourself and you may be a free form kind of person that and you thought you were more structured. Um, so do try both ways and see which way um, you like best. So um, I've got the uh, on the computer. I have those registration lines already up here. And so we've got that um, outer ring. That is the exterior boundary of the exterior feathers. And the inner ring is the spine of our our feathers and then the, the, um, the middle ring is the spine of our feathers and the inner ring is the boundary for the interior feathers and I'm just gonna just so that we are all on the same page so um, not the not the neatest you know I'm, I'm drawing on a computer so not the neatest but you get the idea that's what we did last time where we talked about those exterior feathers and that inner ring is our spine so that's what we did in November so now we're gonna talk about how to do those um, interior feathers. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to actually, just like we did before, um, just like we did last month, I'm going to start to just draw or chalk some placeholders. Now these are not the feathers I'm actually going to stitch, but I find that until I get to the fourth or fifth feather, I don't quite have the right angle coming off of that spine. And so if you just start stitching into your feathers, when you go to meet up with the first one, you're going to find the first one's all kind of wonky, weird shaped. So what we want to do is we want to get into the flow and then we're going to erase the flow and start mid flow. So it'll make sense to you here in a second. So I've just got a blue color here on the screen. And I'm going to start thinking about my wreath in about the six o'clock position, right? So this is the face of a clock, about the six o'clock position. And so with my chalk, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a hook. And if you go over that inner line, I'm going to do it again here. If you go over that inner line, don't worry about it. So I'm going to draw a hook. And I do, I, I am doing these Amish feathers and it's hard for me to backtrack. Um, with my computer, but you get the idea. Um, if you, I'm going to show you with the Amish feather, which is the hardest feather to make. It's a babump feather. But if this is not your personal feather that you feel comfortable with, you can put so many different kinds of feathers inside a, a wreath. Um, so just pick the one that works best for you. For this one, I'm going to start with a hook and then I backtrack over the top and then I swing back out. And as one of my quilting heroes, Karen McTavish says, Think skinny thoughts, right? Keep these, keep these feathers skinny. So I'm just going to do four or five kind of placeholder feathers. Okay, so now and I'm going to do this free form. So this is my jump off the cliff and see what happens um, mindset. Um, and then I'll show you if you need more structure how to do that. So now I'm going to flip over to red. And so this would be actual stitching. So I've just kind of got placeholders to kind of give me a sense of what I'm doing, but I'm going to actually start stitching after I kind of get the flow of it. So these are in chalk and now I'm going to be um, working with my needle and my thread. So I'm going to head up and I'm going to just kind of trace over what I did and stitch back and think skinny thoughts. And so those um, ones that you chalk, you're going to erase. Once I get on the opposite, I went too far there. Once I get on the opposite, here, I, that's going to bug me. Let me redo that one. Woo, it went all the way. All right, so it was just because my little mousy pen got in the way of my finger. All right, so once, once I get to the opposite side of the circle, that's when I'm going to um, stop my needle and erase where I started. So I'd stop my needle, I'd leave it in the needle down position, and then I would go and I would erase what I drew. All right, so now I'm going to turn my needle back on and keep going around the feather. So this is my jump off the cliff and kind of see what happens while thinking skinny thoughts. One thing you might think of is that these interior feathers, they're kind of lazy. They kind of travel and then punch up rather than being kind of perky off the spine. Now, when I get a little past six o'clock, 
I'm gonna stop for a second with my needle in the down position on that spine, and I'm gonna imagine in my head and think about the space that I have left. And I would trace with my finger and I would think, can I get two in here? I think I might be able to. If I just did one, it might be too big. So I'm gonna go with two. So I wanna stop and I wanna think before I just, you know, jump all the way off the cliff. So I've, I'm gonna aim for two feathers to fit in here. Okay, so here I go. I turn that needle back on and I go tap him on the head and then fill in that last feather. All right, so let's turn on our outer feathers just so we can see the whole thing come together. And I'm gonna turn the outer feathers off. So that is just kind of free form, jumping off the cliff, seeing what's happened. Okay, so if this makes you twitch and um, you need a little more, um, you know, structure in your life, I completely understand. So let's look at that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off my little freeform feathers and I'm gonna um, go to a registration. Um, so I'm gonna start to mark these. I'm gonna get out my blue color again. So <clears throat> what I wanna do is I wanna mark my spine with targets. And so do you see how my uh, wreath is already marked into quadrants with this um, north, south, and east, west line? So I'm just gonna eyeball, and I'm gonna put a little mark on my spine at the midpoint between that arc. And then once I have it marked in half, I'm gonna put a little, another little tick mark that represents now it's a quarter and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And I'm gonna do it all the way around. Do your half first, and then do your quarters. And then for my little brain, for whatever reason, I need to actually go through and put blue, even though these are already ticked for me. But for some reason, my little brain needs them to be blue. Um, okay, so now I have basically sectioned off my spine to give me um, a sense of where my feathers are going to fit in best. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to create another um, another layer here so that I can show you what I would do with my chalk. So I'm going to get out my chalk pencil and again I'm going to start around the six o'clock point and these ticks are the launching pad for each of my interior feathers. They are the place where the feather um, breaks free from the spine and head towards the center of my wreath. So I'm gonna start at one of these ticks and I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna start with the first one is a hook and this next one is at the next tick. Now I'm gonna travel up to my tick, tap him on the head, backtrack, and head to my next tick. I'm gonna travel up to my next tick, tap him on the head, backtrack. Okay, that should be enough for us to kind of get a sense of where we're going. So now I'm gonna to go to switch me to red. So that would be in chalk. And I'm gonna, when I finish my inner, my outer feathers, I'm gonna wind up over here in the eight o'clock range, seven o'clock range. And so I wanna pay attention to those ticks. So I'm gonna actually come up and I'm gonna start with this one. And I'm gonna just kinda, you know, the chalk is there as a guideline, but don't think it's a rule. And that interior circle is also a guideline. Don't think of it as a rule. Head back to that next little tick, that next little launching off point. Tap him on the head. So that one I kind of missed, but it's okay. Once I get away from it, I'm going to turn my blues off because <clears throat> I don't need them anymore. I'm going to head back because where I, where I came off is now bugging me. Okay, so I launched off of this tick. So I'm going to go up to this tick. 
and drawing it on the computer is always a challenge. Tap him on the head, trace back, and head to that tick. Tap him on the head, trace back, head to that tick. And here's where I'm going to stop and I'm going to see, um, you know, how many feathers I can fit in there. And really when you have these ticks, they're kind of doing all that for you. So I'm just going to go up to this last tick. And that's where I would end it. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So I'm going to turn off my registrations and I'm going to turn on my outer feathers and there would be my um, feathered wreath. But I would be using, you know, registration lines to help make things a little more structured for me if you need that. Okay, so what I've got here on the machine is our feathered wreath from November. And so you'll notice that we stitched that spine and we stitched those outer feathers. And if you look really closely, you can see the faint outline of that exterior um, donut, that exterior circle that we use to mark where the outside feathers stop. And then you'll see I've got my north-south and I've got that inner circle to show where my interior feathers need to stop. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna um, uh, mark these little uh, registration lines. So I went to the middle and then I'm gonna divide that in a quarter. Now, this is a fairly <coughs> small um, feathered wreath, but if you had a bigger one, you may need more than just you know, the half and then one on each side. So, you, you know, you're gonna have to think about what size wreath you're actually gonna be stitching. Okay, so there we go. All right, so I'm gonna bring my, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, draw in, <coughs> excuse me, draw in my first ones that I will, will later ignore. Okay, so there's my first ones. And I'm gonna start here. Kelsey, can we see okay? Yeah. Okay, awesome. And if you guys have any questions, do you put those in the chat and, um, and Jesse will let me know what your questions are. Um, but let's go ahead and stitch this and then I'll break and see what questions we got. So I'm gonna start with my first feather and that's gonna be that hook. And then I'm going to backtrack and I'm going to kick out to my next registration line. <laughs> and here I thought I had picked the same glide thread that we used last time together. Can you all see it's just a little darker? So my, my feather is going to be a little different. My interior feather is going to be a little different. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and erase the feathers that I started with because they are no longer needed and they will distract me a little bit. So I've got them erased and I'm gonna go ahead and cut that thread uh, where I started as well just to get that out of the way. Okay, so here we go. Okay, and right here is where I'm going to stop and I'm going to imagine, um, do I want to do two in there? I think I do want to do two in there. I think one might be a little too big. All right, so we're going to do two. Okay, and then I would either knot and bury or I would do a tacking stitch. Um, but we have a two-toned feather here because the, the color glide thread I used last time was a little bit lighter. So there you go. There's our interior feather for our wreath. And um, I would love for you to try this. I would love to see um, what you come up with. Just remember, until you can draw it, you can't stitch it. So um, get out, you know, your circles or your dinner plates or your pots and pans and start drawing circles on paper and then get out um, a couple of, of of pencils and start to kind of play with um, these feathers and and I would love to see it if you would post it over there in the clubhouse it's always fun to see what you guys are working on I, I, I think I'm just inherently nosy so um Jesse did we have any questions that came in I don't have any questions okay I mean, everyone looks like they're 
what they're following pretty well. Perfectly. So, so if you do have any questions, just go ahead and post them. There's a little bit of a lag between when I stop talking and when you guys hear it on the other end. It's like a 30 second lag. Um, so I'm living in the future right now. Um, but <clears throat> put your um, questions over there and we will certainly address them. Um, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, APQS. Um, APQS makes long arm machines. They're 100% handcrafted in Iowa, and they're loved the world over, and they have a lifetime warranty. So you can quilt forever with uh, APQS. And right now we do have a used long arm sale that's going on. Um, we have used APQS long arms as low as 4,600, including the table and an APQS warranty. So amazing. If you want more information, about APQS machines, you can contact us here at Quilted Joy and we'll be sure to answer all the questions you have. You can also contact your local APQS dealer or your local APQS store or give APQS a call. Thank you, APQS. We appreciate um, you so much. All right, so I have a looky-loo tour today of an incredibly talented modern quilter. Um, her name is Audrey Esri and you're gonna enjoy her space. She really has a wonderful setup. So let's take a look at Audrey's space. Hi, Audrey. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, how are you? I'm good. It's good to see you. Um, I'm anxious to see all that you um, are doing and see your studio space because you are just prolific. You have so many projects going on at the same time. <laughs> I do have a few things going at once. You're right. Yeah. Well, so um, so you your studio is in your home. Is it a, a bedroom or is it um, like a, a basement area? Where do you have it? Um, so our basement is um, pretty much all finished. And so I have a pretty large space in the basement. Um, it, is, it has a door, so but it's kind of like two rooms with a half wall in between. It's um, very spacious. I'm very lucky. Awesome. All right. Well, turn the camera around because I want to see it. So this is the area um, that has my domestic sewing machine, my Bernina, that's right mm -hmm. here. Um, uh -huh. But one thing that is kind of, I think is special about my workspace is I have two design walls um, on the right hand side here. This is an ironing wall is what I call it. An Cause it's hard, wall. it's like a, it's like a plywood platform that I have set up. And so I'll actually block my quilts on this wall instead of putting them on the floor. Um, and wow. this quilt is 60 by 60 that's on the wall right now. So you can see that um, I can just press right on this wall um, prior to putting binding on or whatever I'm doing. Um, and then this is a more traditional design wall that you can, it's the um, insulation board that's covered with batting mm -hmm. and you can pin into it. So I've got a couple of quilts that are up there now. And then I always retain all of the fabric swatches of past projects to see kind of what color palettes that I've worked with. So here actually is the palette that I chose for this quilt here. Fabulous. Yeah, you love yeah. working in solids, don't you? I do. Yeah, I really do. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. The way you get the tonality of the color changes, really impressive. And I noticed your cutting yeah. table is on wheels, so you can move that around as needed to open up space as well, can't you? So this is actually my ironing board. So this oh, is, yeah. A, yeah, oh, this yeah. is a big board. Um, with a wool mat on it. And um, my husband and I built this base for it to go on. So yeah, it goes on wheels. So it can kind of shift around the room and be right next to the design wall or a little bit closer to my sewing machine. Um, it works It works really well. We like to have things on wheels. <laughs> it makes things easier. Yeah, for sure. So tell me why there's a little humpity bumpity there in your ironing board. What's that little bumpity thing for? Oh, okay. So this is a it, this is a clapper, um, and it's a clapper that has a wool piece on top of it. So when I'm um, attaching facing or binding to the quilts, um, I set this on top of a hot seam, and that makes the binding or the facing really, really flat. Um, also, if I'm piecing curved seams or large um, seams that need to stay very flat, um, I use this clapper. Um, and this one is by Woolly Felted Wonders. Um, I really like this one a lot. So awesome. And so you have all of your fabric that you use to piece with in those glass cases behind you? Yeah, so um, a couple of years ago, I moved all the prints out of my studio and this cabinet, I'm trying to find, this cabinet <laughs> here yeah. is pretty much all solids and past quilts. 
Um, and then I have acquired a few prints over here just to keep things fun and interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I'll take solids out. I pretty much have them color coded, but I'll take them out by, you know, like all of the greens or all of the blues. And then I'll sort mm -hmm. through and see kind of what I need or what I want to work with. So um, I found that to be a very freeing way to work because <laughs> I wasn't worried about cutting into a precious print. I was just more worried about, you know, what is the color that I truly need? What value am I looking for? So I really have loved working with solids. Great. So you've got your piecing station there and then like a second room and that has your long arm machine in it? Yes. Yeah, so this is, um, this is my long arm and mm -hmm. it's a Freddy um, mm -hmm. on a 10 foot table. Um, and I've had it since March. Um, mm -hmm. And then right beside it, this is my cutting table. So I've got some Alex drawers underneath from Ikea. This is like probably the most common <laughs> drawer set yeah. I see in Quilter Studios. Um, yeah. But then I got this cutting table um, from Sam's a number of years ago. And it has a mat that goes across the entire length of the table. Um, and so I have a really functional um, table. So right now I'm sorting a bunch of um, fabrics for a future project. I didn't bother to put those away because this is real those life. I work in this space. Yeah. So is that a <laughs> the table that you have? Is that like a work table, like a garage, like you'd find in a, in a garage? What kind of table is it? Or is yes. that a kitchen table? No, it's totally, it's meant to be kind of um, from a hardware store. So it's just got a wood tabletop and it's super sturdy and strong and the Alex drawer sets fit perfectly underneath. So um, it's all been right. really a functional, a functional thing for me. And where are you keeping all your thread, Audrey? Oh gosh, I mean like, I'm not super organized with thread, but it's in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, in the, it's down in those drawers. Uh huh. Fabulous. And your 10 foot frame really fits in there nicely in that space that you have. Like it was made yeah, for. Yeah, it does. I can, yeah, I can sneak right around the corner here if I need to, but because I uh -huh. work from um, the front of the machine most frequently, uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. it works really well. And really the light bar um, is a game changer for me because in the basement, um, I really need that extra light. Um, yeah. So that's come in really handy. I really, it's one of my favorite things now is having that light bar. <laughs> All right. And so I saw on your wall, I have to be nosy, Audrey, there was all these little pieces of color on the wall to your left. What is that? Nope, other way, Piece. other way. Oh, here. What is that? Yeah, what is that? Yeah, so I cut up my Kona color card um, and attached um, a piece of Velcro to the back side <laughs> of each one of the swatches. Um, mm. And then there are the, the fuzzy side of the Velcro is on the wall. And it, that's a dry board piece, a piece of, uh -huh. um, you know, like the white whiteboard, um, sure. dry erase marker board. And so that's a lot of times how I'll start with color. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of, if you need a color reference, um, the Kona Library of Colors is just so vast um that it's easy to say like oh the color that you're looking for is closest to kona wasabi or closest to mm -hmm. kona storm that kind of thing so um they just kind of pull off the wall and it's a nice color reference <laughs> uh -huh. yeah you can mix and match and kind of play with the smaller smaller bits that way too <laughs> well tell mm -hmm. me what would you if you were to change something about your studio what would you like to change oh man i mean I think probably to say I would love to have more space, but I feel like that would just be greedy. Um, <laughs> my space is really functional. I guess the only thing that I would really truly change is to perhaps have taller ceilings. Um, mm. Because right now my um, design walls are really kind of limited um, by height more than anything sure. because I am in a basement. Um, but I tend to work smaller though. The pieces that you see on the wall on the, on the right, this is huge for me. Um, uh -huh. I much prefer to work kind of in this mini size. Um, it's easier to experiment um, and things. So yeah, I would probably just maybe say taller ceilings, to be honest. Cool. All right. Well, um, so I got some questions for you. Can you turn the camera around so we can see your smiling face? So Audrey, what three things would you recommend to your bestie? They don't have to be quilt related, but what are three things that you've found are kind of cool lately that you'd share with others? Oh gosh, I mean, 
some of my besties are quilters, so I would probably <laughs> have to defer and say these are going to be quilting things. But um, mm -hmm. gosh, if my bestie hadn't joined the Instagram uh, quilting community, I would say definitely do that because um, it's a really great community of folks, and I found some great close friends um, out there on Instagram. Um, I would also say try something new from that list of I've always wanted to do this um, because that's kind of a list that I've been referencing lately um, and found some really fun and interesting things to try. So, um, and have fun. That's my third one. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the list that you mentioned of things to try, is that on the internet somewhere or is that um, just a list that you've come up with <laughs> over your life or? Oh yeah. Like I had always wanted to dye fabric. And so early on in the um, quarantine period, um, I really kind of went down the rabbit hole and learned how to dye fabric and that has been fantastic. So I think we all have that list of if I only had time or I really have Perfect. always wanted to do this, that kind of list, you know, I would just say to my bestie, like pick something out of that list and give it a try. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. A bucket list. Okay. I just wasn't following. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have dyed fabric yep. as well. It's a whole lot of fun. You make a humongous mess, but the payoff is so worth it because you have glorious results. Definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Audrey. Where can people find you online if they want to connect with you? Yeah, um, I post all of my current work in progress on Instagram. Um, my handle is at cotton and bourbon because I'm a quilter from Kentucky and um, you can link to my website and everything from there too. So if you find me on Instagram, say hello. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Well, thank you, Audrey. And we will see you uh, around in the clubhouse. And I appreciate your time today. All right. Thanks so much. Okay. See ya. Thank you so much, Audrey. It was so much fun looking at your space. As you can tell, we recorded that a little bit earlier um, so that uh, we could work out any technical difficulties that we might run into. And I've had so much fun since that recording of um, really just kind of stalking Audrey on Instagram and seeing all of her amazing, amazing work. So uh, she has the whole circle and colorway and um, modern look to her quilts that is just spectacular. So I encourage you to go over and stalk her too. I think you'll enjoy what you see. All right, we do have some new arrivals here at Quilted Joy I want to tell you about. Um, we have selected some Christmas paper pantographs that I think you will love, and we've bundled them together for you as well for a special discount. So I'm going to tell you about each, um, each individual pantograph. The first one I want to talk to you about is holly. Holly um, is a wonderful, it's got the, the holly leaves on it and some ribbon designs, but it's nice because it isn't um, super dense. So it does go pretty quick and it's pretty easy to follow that line as well. So it's a nice one um, for a beginner too. And that one is Holly. And let's see who it was. It's Nancy Reed is who designed that one. And then the next one that we got in that is new for us is White Out. And White Out has all those lovely snowflakes. And this one also, um, we've had our renters um, here at Quilted Joy um, following this pattern. And um, you know, the snowflakes, each one is a little different, which is like real life. And they really, this one quilts up beautifully. This is um, by Dave Hudson and it's called White Out. And then the other one that we got in is called Advent. And Advent has these little loopies inside the Christmas trees with the star and the dancing Christmas trees. Super cute. Um, and that one is um, created by uh, Hermione Aggie. And then the last new one that we got in for Christmas um, pantographs is Winter Holly. And Winter Holly has those same um, holly leaves, but much more flowy uh, ribbon kind of stuff going on around it. And you've got the holly berries, um, really super cute. This one is created by OESD and that one um, we've bundled all four of these into a spectacular little Christmas pantograph uh, bundle for you and given you a discount as well. So if you're interested in picking up a little bundle of Christmas designs, you can head over to quiltedjoy.com and pop those in your cart. I think you'll enjoy having those that'll um, kind of expand your Christmas repertoire uh, with the quilts that you're going to be doing and using your uh, pantographs. Um, I would love for you to uh, review us on Google. The Google machine um, kind of spits out the people that it thinks um, others are interested in. 
And so we do have a link there in the description and I read every single review um, personally, so I appreciate your time. And it just helps Google kind of um, adjust the algorithm to help us find more people, help more people find us, and um, kind of bring the world of, of long arm quilting and machine quilting on a domestic to more people. So thank you so much for leaving your review. I really sincerely appreciate it. Okay, so uh, in the Quilted Joy Clubhouse, um, we do a monthly call for entries where we ask folks to post a photograph of an unquilted quilt top, and then I select one to draw on in the computer to show you how I would quilt it if it were my quilt. And we got so many wonderful um, entries this time there in the clubhouse. It's always fun to see what you guys are working on. Um, but this particular one really caught my eye. So this is Rose. Uh, Rose posted this one. And so first I had to like, Rose, I had to appreciate all of the knickknacks that you have in your sewing room that you included with this photo that you put up of your, of your pretty quilt top. So she has a sign there on the wall that says beautiful things come together a stitch at a time. And she has a, a pretty clock and she's got her design design wall there with a frame around it. So um, a wooden frame around the design wall, um, just gorgeous. So, so, so Rose, now I'm curious at what the rest of the room look, looks like because um, that part of the room impressed me so much. But don't you love, um, this, this quilt is fairly simple, but it's just super effective. Um, so it's those strips of fabric that create the thread on the spools and then it's um, rows of spools. So super fun. So the first thing I wanted to do when thinking about this quilt was how could I enhance the shapes that are already there, the idea that's already there. I want to enhance the notion that these are spools of thread, just massive spools of thread. And so the first thing that I did is I started to think about, and I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see a little bit better. And so I thought, well, I think I'll just do kind of a back and forth, back and forth to give the thread on those spools, right? And so let's take a look at that. I'm going to turn that one off. And so there's all my back and forth. And I'm going to zoom out just so you can see a little bit better, Rose. So I, I started thinking about all of that. Now, this is not the order I would stitch it in. This is the order I designed it in. So then I'm going to think about the order I will stitch it in here in a moment. So the first thing that jumped out at me was I need to put thread on those spools. And that's indeed what I did. And then I wanted to think about the actual spool itself. So I'm gonna zoom in here. Oh, I went the wrong way. I'm gonna zoom in, there we go. And I thought, you know, I don't want to just do, I thought about doing this. I thought about doing, uh, hold on, I gotta get the right thingy. Okay, this one. Um, I thought about doing this, but then I thought, no, that's not, that's, that's gonna be weird. So that didn't appeal to me at all. And so then I thought, well, maybe what I'll do is just little wishy bone back and forth because I want to give the sense that these spools are oriented at a different angle than the thread that's wrapped around the spools of thread. Okay, so I would go through and you see how you could sneak through here and you could do this top part. And you could even sneak down and do your thread and then we're going to uh, do these bottom portions of the spool. So let me just start over here. So I can do the bottom portion of the spool and the top portions of the spool in one pass by kind of sneaking through those little cornerstones that she's got. Sneak and do them all in one pass. So I'm, I'm thinking about this. I haven't decided that that's my thread path, but I'm thinking about it as I design it. Okay, so let's take a look, Rose, and see what that looks like um, on your quilt. Let me see if I can get rid of those because I've already got them on there. Okay, so there we go, Rose. There's your um, spools with the thread and with the um, spools with that wishbone kind of um, back and forth um, L shape uh, design on the spools. And then I started to think about these white spaces between and how I could enhance those and make those feel a little bit more 
thready, yarny, spooly, quilty sewing. Um, and so what I came up with was just simple, simple loops. So um, let's see. Yeah, I can do it on this layer. So I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna do a little circle, little loops through here. And again, I can sneak. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna do, and up. And again, I'm not worried just yet about how I'm gonna connect all these, but I do have some choices. If I notice, I'm looking for my little magic portal so I could sneak across here, but I could also sneak down and keep going. If I, it depended on how I had this oriented um, on my machine of which side is easier than which side to do, whether I wanna stack them in columns or rows. All right, and so, and that kind of gives that spool, you know, where the cat looks at it and wants to chase it. But do you see how it starts to create this pattern? Um, rows across that white space of your quilt. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm gonna take those off because I've already got them here. Let's zoom out just so you can see a little bit better, Rose. So that's where we are currently. We've got our spools done. We've got the top of the spools. We've got our little um, raveling uh, thread that's running through your sewing room in the white space. And at this point, I wasn't like, I, I thought about those um, sashing spaces. And, and Rose, here was my difficulty as I thought, well, maybe I'll just do like a liney thing, just like a little wormy liney thing. But it took away in my mind from the spools. It kind of broke the design of the spools. And those are pretty small little sashing spaces. So in this case, I think what I would do, Rose, is just stitch in the ditch, right? I think I would just stitch in the ditch and get the, um, the seams lined up to keep those stitches and everything um, straight. Again, I haven't chosen like the order I'm gonna do things. I'm just thinking about the design that I'm gonna do. Okay, so then I started to think about her, um, her outside border. And what could I do in this outside border? Because it is a print. So things are gonna, they aren't gonna show quite as well um, as if this were that white space. So for sure that white space between the spools is gonna really show off my quilting. And this exterior um, uh, border isn't gonna show as much. And I thought, you know what I should do? What would be nice in here was piano keys. So piano keys are just, um, you know, they're just straight lines and they're spaced apart. And then I thought, what if the outside border was more like a measuring tape? So, right, the measuring tape has a long line and then it has a little bit of a shorter line and then it has more of a medium line and then it has a little bit of a shorter line and then it has a little bit of a medium line and then it has a little bit of a shorter line and then we have a longer line and then we repeat a little shorter, medium, short, medium, short, long. And I could make this whole outside border look like measuring tape. All right, so I'm gonna take those off because I want you to see what this looks like, Rose, because I was like super jazzed when I figured this out. I was like, oh, what a great little riff on um, piano keys. Okay, so there we go, Rose. So that is, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see. So is it that fun where it's got the measuring tape all along the outside? All right, so I'm gonna zoom back in. And I thought, um, you know, as far as how to do this, if you're thinking, well, how in the heck is that done? I don't wanna break my thread every single time. I'm gonna change colors here just so we can talk about that a little bit. So what I would do is when I'm doing this ditch for this interior sashing is I would go out and back and over and up 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 and back. Now I would wanna mark so that all of my little measuring lines um, the short ones stopped at the same place and the medium ones stopped at the same place. And of course the long ones um, head off the edge of the cliff there. They go, you know, all the way to the edge. Um, but it'd be a, a cute little way and an easy way to make 
um, a ruler around the outside of this fun little um, thread quilt. So that just leaves these cornerstones of what to do in these cornerstones. I'm going to change my color back to red. And I thought what would be super simple would be to quilt a quilt block, to stitch a quilt block on the fabric. And so what I thought was, well, um, what if it were um, like a pinwheel? So I just kind of marked an X, right? And so you would want to stitch out that X. But then I'm going to go in and I'm just going to kind of repeat that wiggly wormy, just like I did on those spools. Every other little pinwheel blade, All right, Rose, and put a little pinwheel in every one of those corners. Um, okay, so I'm going to take that off and I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to turn on that layer so you can see it all done. All right, so there's my little pinwheels, aren't they cute, Rose? There's one there, there's one there, there's one there. So, uh, Rose, thank you for posting this. Of course, you can quilt this quilt any way you like, Rose, but that's the way that I would like, um, that I would choose to do it. I would enhance the whole theme of the quilt um, with the quilting, both um, in that, um, in each individual block, as well as in those um, cornerstones on the outside border. So um, do, do post in the clubhouse, Rose, when you quilt it, because I want to see what you come up with too. So I hope you have fun with it, and I hope that that helped. Um, as far as like the, the um, order I would do things, it really, for that quilt, it kind of depends on how I would load it on the frame. And for that one, I would load it long ways, personally, is how I would do it. And so I would do each of those rows kind of as one giant um, push um, inside the, the quilt top and I would do those um, outside borders in one push as well. So it will require you to break your threads a couple times, but it's totally worth it. So I think you'll have fun with it. Um, okay, so we had some other fantastic um, quilts posted in the Quilted Joy Clubhouse. There were so many that I couldn't, I couldn't show you all of them. So I'm just gonna show you a few of them, but I encourage you to go over the Quilted Joy Clubhouse there on Facebook and you'll see what everybody's posting. Um, so let's take a look at some of them. So Deborah, Deborah posted this one. Now, Deborah, um, I love that Deborah included a photo of the dime sitting on the fabric so that you can see how dense um, and how little her background filler was. Um, great job, Deborah. When I do stuff this small, my eyes start to water and about halfway through, I question my choices in life. Um, so I, <laughs> I applaud you, Deborah. I think it's great. I love how she kind of took the traditional uh, motif and, kind, and, and really brought it forward with her quilting. So wonderful job, Deborah. And Carol, this is gorgeous. Um, so Carol just had fun with her rulers. Um, Carol had fun with arc rulers and circle rulers, and it just adds such movement and flair to this. Um, really beautiful job, and it perfectly matches your cutting board, Carol. Um, very nice. Um, she also posted this one where she was posting her, um, that she is working on her hooks and her swirls, and um, I want you to pay attention to how pretty the color of the thread is on that purple fabric. So. You know, sometimes like a hunter orange might kind of give you pause when you pull it out of your cupboard, but look at how pretty that is on that purple fabric. Really great job, Carol. And then Deb posted this one. This was a quilt she's working on for her husband. And I really love, Deb, um, what you did in the border. So just simple, um, just simple chevrons there out in the border, but it really frames up that quilt nicely. So, and I, I, you did a great job on your swirls too. So nice job, Deb. And Amy posted this one. Amy had some fun with our feathers. Um, wreaths. She just kind of changed up a little where the interior of the wreath, um, she put a very modern kind of spinning, um, very geometric design in the interior portions of the wreath. And then take a look at how her wreath, um, those feathers kind of really extend out and they kind of cross over the boundaries of the block to kind of um, give the illusion of a floating, those, those um, stars, those Ohio stars are kind of floating on that white. And that's all caused because she has um, quilted those uh, wreaths so that they cross over the seams and create a beautiful little background. So great job, Amy. Joy posted this one. And I don't know if you all have seen um, this panel, but it's a wonderful place to play with feathers. And of course, we've been talking about feathers all year long. And so Joy posted this one where she is doing free motion feathers in each of those petals. And um, it's just gorgeous, the kind of depth and dimension and beauty that you get. And there's so much going on that if you make a wobble or a bobble, it's really hard for the eye to see. Nice job, Joy. 
And Cheryl posted this one. Look at how small those pieces are. Oh, Cheryl, you did a great job. So this is gonna look beautiful. I think this was a gift for someone um, is what she said. And this one is gonna look wonderful under somebody's tree. So really beautiful job, Cheryl. Um, Marie posted this one. It was a baby quilt and I, I just love how she's playing with the colors and just did an all over edge to edge, but some baby is going to get snuggly warm with that one. So nice job, Marie. Um, Jessica, this one made my day. So Jessica um, took one of our free motion designs that's in our newsletter from um, our free motion holiday um, extravaganza that we had um, and she just added a few more feathers to her little swan but took those step-by-step -step instructions and, and uh, free motion quilted a swan in that setting triangle so lovely Jessica I, I loved this when I saw it well, thank you so much for posting your items um, in the Facebook group. I always enjoy seeing what you are working on. Now, next month, we will meet at on Wednesday, January the 6th at 1 o'clock Eastern. And I've decided that 2021 is going to be the year of the grid. So we're going to talk all about grid designs. Grid designs can be complex and they can be beginner. So it just depends. They're really great designs for kind of meeting you where you're at. Um, and they give you a place to play with free motion, but some structure in your world as well so that you can keep things symmetrical and you can keep things um, evenly spaced. So I can't wait to show you the start of our grid designs and then we'll play with those all throughout 2021 and build and build and build upon um, everything that we learn. Do join us on Facebook. Um, we have um, some wonderful things that we share there on Facebook, as well as any specials that we may have in the shop that you might want to know about. And um, of course, on our Facebook group for Quilted Joy Clubhouse, you can join in there and chat and talk. We are we have so many wonderful machine quilters from all over the world who are in our clubhouse, and they are ready to get out their pom poms and cheer for you and see what you're doing and and um, uh, help you in any way that they can. They're just um, we've got a wonderful, wonderful group so I hope that you join us um, there on Facebook in our group and then you can follow me on Instagram um, I generally post on Instagram more stuff that you know just going on in my personal life so um, head over there and then of course on our YouTube channel you will find um, lots of tutorials and videos and all of our past episodes of the Quilted Joy Clubhouse. And before we go, I just want to check in with Jesse and see if we had any questions come through that I want to uh, answer for you before we go. Everyone's good. Everyone's just really excited to see the interior of the wreath. Yes. Oh, good. I'm glad that you all enjoyed seeing the interior of the wreath. I know it can be a little intimidating, so draw it out first and then go stitch it. You don't have to show anybody what you stitch. You can just put some play fabric on and, and try it, but do try it because I think you'll be surprised. Just figure out if you're a jump off the cliff kind of person or if you need structure in your world. You know, Decide which way you're going to go. All right, you guys, I will see you in January at 1 o'clock Eastern on January the 6th. See you guys later. Bye.